All right, hello, welcome, welcome back, or just welcome, whatever it is. Anyways, hi, my name is Shayna, I'm an astrologer, and today we are continuing my aspect series. Yes, I'm doing a video about every single aspect in astrology, but today, you know, we're embarking on the Mercury square Saturn part of our journey of the aspect series. Um, if you want to check out the rest of my playlist and see what of the other aspects that I've done so far, you can click the little link up here and it'll take you directly to my full playlist and I may have some other aspects that you might be interested in learning about but today it is all about Mercury square Saturn but before we get into the rest of the video let me just get some advertising out of the way so I sell birth chart readings on my website shaynaemily.com I have full-length readings there tarot readings astrology readings sinistry readings transit progress chart readings and then I also have an astrology TikTok where I post very frequently over there on if you just can't get enough of me yapping on about astrology you know that's where I post on my little TikTok page. Anyways, sorry. Um, oh yeah, and I go live every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. I've been doing that for like four months now straight, so I'm so proud of myself. Look at that. My TikTok is at Shayna.Emily, and I also have a personal Instagram, but let's get into the video. So if you didn't know, I do these by request only, and not only by request, I let you guys, my viewers, vote on which aspect I do next. So um, this aspect was chosen by a poll. So I'll be doing two aspect videos in a row. Here's the results for the last poll um, as far as it stands right now. And as you can tell, Moon conjunct Lilith and Mercury square Saturn have been kind of like battling it out for the majority vote. So I'll be doing a video on both of those. If the Moon conjunct Lilith video is already up, I'll link it up here if you're interested in that one. But yeah, make sure that you check out my community tab because I do post polls every now and then whenever I'm about to do another aspect video. So if you want some input on which aspect I'm going to do, you can vote over there. Also, please put your aspect requests down below because basically what I do is I have a document, I have a document and I tally all the votes for the different aspects and whichever aspects have the most requests, the most commented requests, those are the ones that get picked for the pool. So a lot of people will send me sometimes like, oh my god, please, like I request this one, please, please do it. It's honestly not up to me at the end of the day, it's up to you guys. But let's just hop right into it. So if you do not know what a square is in astrology, I already talked about that in my aspect video, which will be linked up here. So I'm not going to talk about what a square means today. And I'll also, if you don't know what the planet Mercury or the planet Saturn means, I also have a video about the inner planets because Mercury is an inner planet and the outer planets because Saturn is an outer planet. I'll link the inner planets up here and then I guess after that one I'll put I'll link the outer planets. So we're going to put those all together for this video today. So again, I do not choose these videos, hand to God, but I do have this aspect and not only do I have this, but actually my boyfriend has this as well and I've just known a lot of people in my life with this aspect. It seems to be a theme. It seems to be something that I tend to be attracted to, um, probably because I'm not attracted to all the aspects that I have, not gonna lie, but this one tends to be one that I, I, I tend to gravitate towards for whatever reason. So I definitely have a lot of personal experience with this aspect, not only me having it, but being around a lot of people with it. So we have Mercury, which is all about communication, all about how we think, how we process, how we learn, how we speak. And then we have Saturn, which is kind of like the father time planet is a lot talks a lot about discipline it talks a lot about slow progress slow steady progress towards goals okay and the square adds some friction so basically combining these two aspects is kind of like combining the really enthusiastic student which is mercury with the respected teacher so these are two slightly different energies you know mercury is very like up and about let's go 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 and saturn is a little bit slower it's a little bit more methodical so it's not the most disharmonious energies but they're also not very intuitive either um, but I do think they can work well to basically um, form somebody with a very regimented thought process and I'm um, somebody that has a lot of respect for how they learn and grow and teach and take in information so this is a very methodical approach to the way that you speak think and learn and with the square it, it causes even more friction and it kind of emphasizes sizes that even more. You know, this can be tense, this can be frustrating, but it can also equal amazing results, even to the point of potential mastery of a subject or a thought form. This is definitely somebody that always goes the hard 
hard way to find knowledge. Now, that doesn't mean that you're trying to go the hard way. With the square, you're probably not trying to go the hard way. You're probably actually trying to go the most reasonable, logical, um, straightforward way. But with the square, it causes a lot of hiccups and it can cause a lot of blockages. So this is somebody that rarely winds up taking shortcuts, but they can wind up also getting lost along the way to figure out whatever it is that they're trying to uncover. Because it's thorough, but with the square, sometimes it's a little bit too thorough. I think that my videos reflect this very strongly. My videos, even this video, are probably all too long. I get too in the weeds with things and can get too distracted and too caught up in all the little you know, ifs and ands and ors or buts, but it's just because I'm always trying to find, you know, the most concrete answer. But to find a concrete answer, you have to do so much digging and so much uncovering first. So it can just be a lot of delays <laughs> as well. Speaking of delays, this can cause a delay in speech sometimes. Um, this can cause speech impediments. This can cause a struggle to learn new language. Um, this can just cause learning disabilities as well. However, with Mercury Square Saturn, I think it creates some of the smartest people, very intellectual people, but it just causes delays to get there, you know? These are people that take a very rational approach to everything mentally. Sometimes it can be too rational to where it can verge on being extremely skeptical and extremely untrusting. In fact, there can be a tendency towards pessimism and a tendency towards nihilism even. However, when I was thinking about this, I was like, you know what? I feel like something like Mercury trine Saturn would be the fully nihilistic person that accepts it and is okay with it and it is what it is this is how they feel and i actually was like i'll bet you anything frederick nietzsche nietzsche if i'm saying that wrong nietzsche um i don't know <laughs> has this aspect and i looked it up and he does have mercury trying saturn and i was like that makes sense because i've always felt like I don't want to be nihilistic. I don't even want to be pessimistic. But what I uncover and where I wind up going down winds up kind of taking that approach, but it's that square. So it's like, oh, I don't want it to be. I don't want to be this way, but I don't fully accept it. But unfortunately, I can be that way if that makes sense. A big, big, big thing also is that Saturn causes blockages, it causes a brick wall, but everything that this person usually says or writes or th things of that nature, they feel the need to self-censor it to a certain degree. Um, and again, it's the square. With the trine or the sextile, you might want to censor it. You might just be cautious about how you speak. But with the square, it's rather, it feels like an obligation. You want to be honest and you want to be truthful and you want to be upfront about things, but you feel as though which I'll get into the reasons in a second, you feel as though you can't be. You feel as though you have to censor yourself. You feel as though you can't say everything that you want to say and how you want to say it. And a lot of it is because you can come across very negative and sarcastic and just a lot of people don't like that tone, you know? And so a lot of where that self-censory comes from is because you're trying to not be too mean, too negative, or too sarcastic. Another big thing with Mercury Square Saturn, which I think is the biggest cause of frustration, is that you f you, you're called stupid a lot. I know I am literally looked in my eyes and told that I'm stupid all the time. Obviously it's a square. It's really frustrating because with Mercury square Saturn, you're not stupid. Everybody that I've known with this aspect is definitely very far from stupid, the farthest thing from it. But you can get pinpointed as that. You can be made to feel stupid. And that is really, I think with Mercury square Saturn, just taking this aspect purely, that is like the most offensive thing you could ever say to that aspect, just calling them stupid. Again, we're just taking this aspect purely. With this aspect, the greatest feeling this aspect can have, what can give this aspect a lot of security is saying that something was a job well done. You know, whether you look at that person, you say that was a job well done, or you can, you, you know, you look at what you did and you say, you know what, that was a job well done and be proud of yourself. That's like the biggest culmination, like what you're trying to get to, the biggest compliment, but it's so, so, so hard to get there. And there's so many hurdles. And even when you do feel like it was a job well done, you always feel like there's something still that is missing or something that can be improved. So it's frustrating and it's hard to ever feel like you've completed something in the way that you want to. So as I mentioned, it feels like Saturn has a brick wall in between your thoughts and getting them out to your mouth. Like 
here's my mind, here's the brick wall, and then here's my mouth getting them out, right? It's just really hard to express yourself freely. You have lots of thoughts in your brain, but it's very limited to what actually comes out. These people can be very quiet or can be, um, you know, not talk as much or share their opinions as much, not because they don't have them, they have very, very strong opinions, but because they have such strong opinions, they can come across as very decisive and off-putting, and so they feel the need to censor themselves and quiet themselves a lot. This aspect alone and purely sometimes holds their tongue too much, honestly. You feel like you are never quite allowed to share everything, and this aspect even struggles to accept compliments wholeheartedly as well. The good thing about this aspect is that it never gives out half-assed compliments if it says that it likes something or, it or if it appreciates you or, you know, it tells you that you did a good job or whatever. It really, really means it. It's not ever just going to say that, but... It has trouble accepting that from somebody else. Um, like I mentioned, even my boyfriend has this and I always make fun of him because he has this, you know, he's Saturn in his fifth house, Mercury in his second house. He does a lot of work on cars and bikes and I always am like, oh my God, you've gotten, you've done a lot today. Like I'm really proud of you or whatever. And he'll always say, he'll always respond with, it's getting there. It's never fully done. It's never fully satisfied with it. It's always getting there. I'm always like, it's such a Mercury square Saturn thing to say. Another big Key, key component with this aspect is authority because Saturn rules authority and a square has friction with um, authority. Whenever you have Saturn squares, that shows a little bit of a friction with the authority in your life, whether that be parents, teachers, elders, you know, a boss, whatever the authority is in your life, the overarching concept of the man, you know? With this aspect, I'm just saying parents because it's like easy, I guess, um, but parents might have expected mental maturity and self-sufficiency, but from too young of an age, almost to a point where it's like, uh, I mean, I don't know how you expect me to be so like mentally aware and mentally capable. I'm still a little kid. I'm still learning this stuff, but they just expect complete mental self-sufficiency um, and maturity and you don't get any breaks with it whatsoever. And this aspect doesn't mean always that you are mentally mature from a young age. In fact, it might mean that you're not, you know, because it's a square, but it, it feels like it's obligated to act that way or be that way. I, I do think one part of this aspect might be like being around cussing at a very young age, an appropriate language at a very young age, hearing very young, when you're very young, hearing very harsh language, harsh language being said to you, um, being spoken um, to as an adult when you're very young, but not always in a way that makes you feel like good and smart. Um, sometimes it can be, very much so. Um, my parents, I think, did have a good way of speaking with me and not babying me with a young age, which I'm really happy about with them. But also in some veins, uh, authority and parents can be just very harsh with you verbally in a way that they aren't with other people. Like I know people always say in my comment section on my TikTok, who hurt me? And I don't know what to say to that. And I'm like, I don't know, nobody. Don't my real answer to who hurt me is my fucking dance teachers. Let me tell you. <laughs> They were so mean and it's like they didn't speak to this is just an example like they didn't speak They didn't speak to the other kids that way You know why why were they like other kids couldn't have handled what the things that my dance teacher said to me Why did they speak to me that way? Um, you know, you might have an experience close that you feel to that it's in some ways it can be like Oh, they're giving me tough love but with the square it goes harsher than that where sometimes it really just is to hurt your feelings and to knock you down a peg and to to just, I don't know what it is. I guess there's just this feeling with this energy, like, oh, this person can take it kind of thing. But definitely Mercury square Saturn has cer a certain level of authority issues. This isn't going to show just authority issues off the bat, like something like, oh my God, Saturn square Pluto is going to show authority issues in every way, form and shape. Mercury square Saturn authority issues are more in the verbal way because it's Mercury. So it's more about following rules, right? It's like, I'm not going to follow rules and I'm not going to follow rules if they don't make sense to me. This is a very Capricornian edge to the way that you think. You know, I'm not going to do as you say just because you're saying it. You're not, if you're not going to give me a reason, then I won't hear it. Something I do appreciate about my parents is that I felt like whenever, for the most part, I felt like my parents always explained to me why they were giving me the rules they gave to me. They always said, you're not allowed to do this because this might happen and we don't want this to happen because of this. And I go, okay. So uh, I was always used to being explained things in that way. And so when authority has 
has rules just for rules sake or just because that's how it's done before mercury square saturn is not going to not going to jive with that because it's a harsh aspect they're not just going to go along it's going to cause friction right i also think that this can show a piece of autism now this aspect does not mean that you're autistic for example my boyfriend is not autistic and i feel very confident in saying that but of course i'm with him and you know autism is just a set of personality traits and it's like if you have all those personality traits and those sets then that means autism but everybody can have you know one or two of those traits because they're just normal human traits it's about having them all combined that creates autism so i do think that this is like a piece of the puzzle that can create autism if i'm at work and you're telling me to do a task that doesn't actually help the overall enrichment of the business and nobody cares about then why would i do it it's a very autistic way of thinking you know you can feel very punished for the things that you say and how you express yourself verbally you can just feel like that shit comes down heavier on you for it if that makes sense like people don't forget the things that you say they hold it against you whereas you know other people things might fly off their chest and fly under the radar you feel like you always carry the weight of what you say with you and this can be a switch up you can either have too much respect for authority and and verbally and give them too much space or not give them not have any verbal respect for authority and it's hard to do a happy medium you know you're either all in or all out but at the end of the day I do like this aspect I will say because I do think that Mercury square Saturn wants to be their own mental authority. I think this has a lot to do with independent thinking. Any Mercury Saturn aspect actually square just kind of is harder to get there and has to kind of fight and defend it more. They do not want to have any mental authority over them, although they will constantly have people try to verbally express their authority over them. Um, that shit really frustrates me and I can't deal with it um honestly at all and I get really mad I even had an experience this past weekend I felt like it was preparing me for Mercury square Saturn sometimes having a Mercury square Saturn I guess the what's the word the personification of it can kind of just feel like you're talking to some coked out egotistical old man who just talks over you and doesn't let you get a word in like it's like preaching to you as though you're dumb like that's how I feel like everybody talks to me <laughs> honestly um even how I see people talk to my boyfriend even which surprises me because he's very tall and he does demand a lot of natural authority but people will always try to talk down to him and always try to talk to him like he doesn't know what he's talking about and it always makes me laugh because I he doesn't say what he knows he just knows he knows what he knows but my god it, it even frustrates me when people act very mercury square saturn towards him just like people will act that way towards me I like this aspect because I feel like, you know, it's a, it makes it you able to think for yourself though. Um, so strongly though, because it is a square, it goes too far that you might struggle with the concept of group thought. And I know you're thinking, well, that's good. It's good, but at the end of the day, it's like, well, then you can't get along in groups and you can't get along in clubs and you can't get along in societies then you can't get along in greater overarching systems. Okay, Mercury square Saturn, it's the constant struggle. Am I stupid? Am I smart? Am I stupid? Am I smart? You know, it's always back and forth between the two maybe if not even just stupid smart or like am I a complete fucking idiot or am I a total fucking genius I feel like it kind of piggybacks between the two and there's barely ever an in-between you know maybe you've been put in some sort of higher level or higher thing and you always felt like an imposter you I always felt like the stupidest one amongst the smartest or you're seen as like dumber than you are and your smarts are very underestimated like people will talk down to you teachers will talk down to you people will explain things in a way like explain things that you already know and that you could teach them more about kind of situation but I do think that the more that somebody trashes your intellect, the more determined you are to prove them wrong. I also think this is an, an energy of working harder, not smarter. Unfortunately, I definitely think this is the aspect of working harder, not smarter. I think that is why I like Gemini energy so much because they work smarter, not harder. And I'm like, God, that's, that is smarter <laughs> at the end of the day, you know? <laughs> but I tend to always go the hard way through things. Let's talk about some strengths and some weaknesses. I do think this energy can be a fast reader and a quick memorizer, and I think they can naturally pick up intellectual pursuits faster than others, but it's almost like there's more on your plate to have to do so, if that makes sense. Um, like, ugh, I keep on bringing myself into it, but like, I know when I did my bat mitzvah, the teacher that I had, the like helper that I had to kind of guide me through it, 
the way she wound up teaching me was just so much harder than it taught everyone else. Like we got to the same point, but I just had to go through so many more steps for no reason. And it's not like, oh, I'm better because of it. No, I, what I will say about this Mercury square Saturn, if you wanting, if you're wanting to interpret your own, your strengths are whatever house your Mercury is in, right? And then Saturn's house is what makes you feel like an imposter, if that makes sense. So if I'll take my boyfriend, his strength is Mercury in the second house. He's very good at knowing how things work. He has a very natural ability for like craftsmanship, making things with his hands, um, learning things very tact tactily. Like I could never do that. He's very good at that stuff. But where his where he feels like an imposter is his fifth house. When he creates those things, you know, his creative expression, he I think always I think he has this feeling like it's never enough. It's never up to my standards. It's never where I want it to be. Also, sometimes with Mercury square Saturn, there can be a knack for discipline because Mercury square Saturn can, I think, be an insanely disciplined energy, but sometimes too disciplined. Sometimes there can be too strong of an adherence to the rules, you know, which can be amazing in some ways. You can adhere, adhere to rules that you create for yourself or rules other cre others create for themselves, but sometimes it can go too far to where it can be very limiting and very debilitating. It can be like somebody where it's like, oh, sometimes rules are meant to be broken. Sometimes these little rules or these little things um, have kind of lost its point and now you're just following them for the sake of following them. And in that ways it can, like I said, be very limiting. Something else that's a good strength with this aspect is you are able to disconnect yourself from a problem or a situation, especially emotionally, in order to figure out the best, most rational answer. Um, so I do think that Mercury square Saturn, or just I should say Mercury Saturn people in general, give really good advice. And rarely, especially with Mercury square Saturn, the advice you want to hear, it's usually very hard advice. This is kind of like the definition of tough love, this aspect. Oh, not the fly again. Um, but it does struggle with emotional answers. Sometimes what you need is emotional advice. And it struggles with an ability to open up and communicate things in a way, in a very emotional, vulnerable way. This is definitely an aspect and an energy that struggles to be vulnerable. You know, you might have also, as you were growing up, been told that it's weak or stupid to be vulnerable or weak and stupid to make emotional decisions or heart-centered decisions. Sometimes it's almost too disconnected from the answers that it gives that it doesn't understand the human behind them asking the question, you know, um, and that way you can give a little bit of advice that is a little bit um, harsh and rude or just not understanding the full person behind it. Now let's talk about like communication between friends because I've spoken a lot about like communication between authority and parents because it does have a lot to do with that heavily. But you know, no matter who you are, you communicate between friends and this aspect definitely plays a big role in that. There are frequent misunderstandings, which is like the Mercury side of things and you know, frequent frustrations, which is the Saturn side of things that come into Mercury square Saturn. This is definitely a misunderstood energy, but not when we think about it when we say misunderstood as far as like Scorpio or Aquarius, where it's like, you guys don't understand me, you don't understand why I'm doing things, yada, 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 you don't understand the why behind it. With Mercury square Saturn, it just feels like you'll say exactly what you mean, but it'll still somehow be misinterpreted and that is very, very frustrating. Within friend communications, there can be a real impatientness <laughs> um, when it comes to talking with people, just because I think there's a real get to the point like quality with this aspect, you know, kind of like, what was the point of what you're telling me? What, what's the point of what I'm listening to? If this doesn't further my education, if this doesn't further my understanding in you, if there's not a reason for this communication, then what's the point of it? Everything that is said has to have a point, which can can shut down people a little bit and that is where I think the impatientness comes from. Why, why am I sitting here listening to this? Do you have a reason? You know, which is a little bit rude and blunt. This can definitely be an aspect that struggles with lighthearted conversation. They can make everything have a little bit of a serious tone or implication to it. In fact, they can have, you know, this is definitely an unsolicited advice sort of aspect as well. Like I wasn't coming to you for advice. I was coming just to vent to you. And it's like, oh, well, I figured there was a point to why you were saying that. So I figured I would give you advice because or else why are we talking about it? it can be kind of the nature. This is an extremely critical energy. 
very judgmental. It's not judgmental in that Virgo way where it's like you have to have the same morals as me, unless it's in Virgo energy, then it is going to be very judgmental in that moralistic Virgo way. But rather it's more judgmental in a character way. You're looking at somebody's character and you're judging them. Are they, are they following through with what they're saying kind of situation? So you can hold people to a very high standard. You can hold yourself to a very high standard as far as your character goes. Um, and it can be sometimes unreachable and unattainable. And you can feel like you don't don't get as many, uh, you don't get as much, what's the word, like loose, you know, you don't get as much loosey goosiness with, you know, your mistakes because of this aspect, because of this energy. But a lot of that comes from you being so critical of others and so quick and harsh towards others. They're, of course, they're going to act like that towards you back. Because if you are constantly ridiculing others' mistakes or constantly ridiculing other people's, you know, um, lack of character in some way, form or shape, that when you falter, of course, people are going to come down on you twice as hard because you have been the one you know, furthering this rhetoric for so long. This is not an energy that kisses ass. This is an energy that absolutely hates kissing ass, actually. Sometimes this is an aspect that could use to kiss a little more ass, if I'm being honest with you. Sometimes I'm, I look back and I'm like, ah, oh, I will literally just be a little bit too mean, a little bit too quick to uh, cut off, especially with authority as well. Um, and I really don't care about the consequences at the time, but in the grand scheme of things, of course, I do care about the consequences and the way that I act towards authority. Also, this aspect can have a very boring or monotone cadence to their voice. Um, I think it actually makes your voice lower as well. This is a terrible storyteller. This is a person that does not fluff up the story at all, could sometimes use to tell the story in a more interesting way, but they definitely don't, um, almost to the point of where it's hard to listen to and you don't realize the weight of the story sometimes and how funny or interesting it could be. I know I'm an absolutely awful storyteller and I always want other people to tell the stories for me um, because I am just so boring and terrible to listen to sometimes about it. This is a side note. This is kind of like me venting, <laughs> but I guess from my own personal experience with this aspect, sometimes I swear to God, I really do think that people enjoy misunderstanding me. I do think that they will revel in making me look stupid sometimes and wanting to not understand where I'm coming from. I think that people want to do that sometimes as ridiculous as that sounds. I think it's because now in my head, I'm like, well, I think it's just because they're too dumb to be able to think critically and understand things at the height of kind of where I'm coming from and where I'm saying them from. Um, people will always assume that I'm speaking from a place of l being less educated and not more. That's what I'm saying. They enjoy thinking I'm stupid. So maybe I'm saying something and they it's kind of an odd thing to say or an odd opinion, they're automatically gonna assume that I'm coming from a less educated standpoint rather than a more educated standpoint, if that makes sense. So it sometimes might be the case, who knows, but most of the time I'm not going to say an opinion or speak on something that I don't know, that I don't know about or I feel like I have a good understanding of. I think this is an aspect that really is not good at poetry and really does not like poetry, right? Get it out, say it what it is, say it how it is. I don't need this whole poetic thing. I really like, you know, symbolism and I really like, you know, personifying things or whatever it might be, but I hate that fluffy, you know, I guess I'll say like Piscean, Neptunian poetry thing. Oh, it frustrates the shit out of me. Just convey the information to me already. I just, I hate Shakespeare. Like I, I, I think it's so dumb. I hate Tartuffe. I had to learn so much about Shakespeare. So to conclude, let's talk about some challenges, obstacles, and some advice. So a big thing is to overcome fear and mental insecurity and to be secure in your own mental abilities and not need an external source of validation or affirmation. Like a lot of times Saturn really needs, really yearns, and really strives to try to receive. They really want authority telling them that they're doing a good job and they really want recognition, but a lot of times they don't receive it. So you just need to accept it and find your own security within yourself and your own affirmation in yourself and start rewarding your own goals and reward your own talents and reward your own feats. Another good piece of advice is to try to find a combination of speaking to others with respect while simultaneously not shutting your morals. Mercury square Saturn is really good at the whole not shutting your morals thing. Almost too good to where it's not very good at the respect thing and it might struggle, it might not realize it's doing this, but it will kind of, it can really be disrespectful to others and how cut off and how blunt and pessimistic and mm, it is and unemotional it is towards the way that it speaks. So trying to find a sort of respect for the way that others communicate will again, not undermining your own moral 
morals or your own or their own way that you speak as well trying to find a good balance which is really hard for a square trying to find balance there i think that mercury square saturn actually takes criticism very well and is actually very open to it but just i think that mercury square saturn seeks it out a little bit too much um uh, might almost enjoy negative criticism a little bit too much or seek out negative criticism a little bit too much. You know, you're allowed to take compliments as well. You're allowed to take those good things in as well. There's a lot of ambitiousness with this aspect, but don't be so narrow-minded. Sometimes you can be so ambitious and so determined towards intellectual pursuits that it can veer towards narrow-mindedness. And you can, like I said, it can limit you. You can miss out on a lot of fun, free things because of this narrow-minded tenacity towards ambition. And lastly, if you have Mercury square Saturn recognize that most likely you are much harder on yourself than anybody else is um, and anybody else will be with you you're probably the person that critiques you the most as far as your mental abilities and your mental pursuits and the way that you speak and communicate and how you learn and so just know that like people don't know the full story people don't know your full story people don't know your full intellect and people will always assume the wrong thing so just as long as you are confident in your own mental abilities and your own mental intellect and you don't let everybody else's assumptions get to you too much um, but yeah, that is my Mercury Square Saturn video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if I missed out on anything in the comments. I'm always curious to learn more. What are your experiences with this aspect? Especially like, I'd be curious to know what houses you have it in and how that affects you differently, depending on the houses. Again, I have a website, shaynaemily.com, where I sell full length birth chart readings. I have an astrology TikTok, which I post very frequently on, and I have a personal Instagram. Please leave your aspect requests down below. I will add them to my ever expanding list, which I really appreciate. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.